In today's video, we're going to cover the fastest external SSD enclosure I've tested to date. To find out more about this Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 compatible device from Orico, then stick around for the rest of this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification so you'll know about future videos. If you find this video useful, please give it a like as it really helps promote the channel. Full disclosure, Oracle did reach out to me and send me these two enclosures to evaluate, but they haven't paid me for this review or influenced it in any way. As with all my hardware reviews, the results and opinions are strictly my own based on everyday usage. They're going to see this video for the first time just as you see it. I've tested several SSD enclosures from Oracle in the past videos, and overall they provide a nice blend of value and performance. When they reached out to me to see if I was interested in testing their USB 4 Thunderbolt enclosure, I was intrigued based on the performance claims of this device. As an added bonus, they also sent me a very, very inexpensive, low-cost SSD enclosure for those of us who have extra 2.5 inch drives laying around, as this thing can be bought for around $10. We'll cover that device briefly at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around to the end if you're interested in that device. Let's go through the hardware and see what comes in the box. Quickly go over the specs and put it together so we can test it. In terms of specs, it supports 40 gigabit per second transfer speed, and it can get read and write speeds of up to 3100 megabytes per second, which of course is dependent on the NVMe drive that you're selected. We'll talk more about that later on. It's compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and 4 as well as USB 4, and backwards compatible with the USB 3.2, 3.1, and 3.0. The adapter is plug and play and supports Windows, Mac OS, and Linux with no additional drivers or software. It also supports trim and smart functions and has a 10 minute smart sleep built in. In the box you get an instruction booklet, a USB-C cable with a USB-A adapter, the enclosure, the thermal pad, and the heatsink. Assembly of this device was pretty straightforward. Simply apply the thermal pad directly to the drive and push on the heat sink so that it snaps into place onto the drive securely. You don't want the heat shield not snapped on properly and angled. Once you've got that, insert the drive into the M.2 connector and just screw it down. When you're done, put the cover back on and you're ready to go. Before we get into testing, let's talk briefly about SSD compatibility. Though almost every drive will work with this and other enclosures, SSD controller compatibility can lead to less than optimum performance. When I initially set this up, I was not getting the right performance I expected using a Samsung 960 or the 980 on either my MacBook Air M1 or my Razer laptop with Thunderbolt. Looking at the benchmark, you can see that the right performance is extremely low for NVMe. I repeated this with several Samsung drives with basically the same result. As it turns out, if you do some research, the Samsung drives, though arguably one of the best and most reliable drives for an in-system application, can be an issue with a variety of these Thunderbolt enclosures, and it's not unique to this particular enclosure. This doesn't really show up if you're using just USB 3.1 as you're more limited by the interface. But with USB 4 or Thunderbolt, the drive should run close to the rated speed. So you may want to do some research on the drive that you plan on using or have to make sure it will give you maximum performance. I ended up using the Sabrent Gen 4 SSD as well as the WD Black Gen 4 SSD. And it was the difference was night and day. As the M1 Max have some of the fastest internal drive in laptops today, I baseline the internal drive as a point of reference. As you can see from these results, the internal SSD gets speeds of about 2600 megabytes per second and almost 3000 megabytes per second for read speeds. Testing the Orico enclosure with the Sabrent drive, you can see that the performance is outstanding with around 2300 megabytes per second write and 2700 megabytes per second read, making this one of the fastest combos I've used to date and almost matching the benchmarks of the internal drive. I'll leave links to everything in the comments below should you be interested in any of these devices. I'm super impressed with the USB 4 Thunderbolt enclosure, and this device will take permanent position plugged into my Anchor Thunderbolt dock so that I can share it between the laptops. 
The construction is pretty good and changing out the SSD drives is quick and easy, though it's not a toolless operation and you'll need to use a small screwdriver. Where this really shines is the performance. There aren't too many enclosures that support USB 4 and Thunderbolt and give you this kind of performance. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I want to quickly share with you another enclosure that costs around 10 bucks, and it's perfect if you have any extra 2.5 inch SSD or hard drives that are just laying around and like to put them to good use for backup or whatever other use you want them for. There isn't that much to this enclosure, and it supports almost all 2.5 inch SATA hard drives or SSDs, both 7mm and 9.5mm. It's got tool free installation and the drive can easily be popped in and out. It supports hot swap and as you can see removing and replacing the drive is extremely easy. Given the extremely low cost of this device, it's a great way to reuse any extra hard drives or SSD that you might have around. I really want to thank the team at Orico for sending me these devices to test. And that's about it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.